Right now, two men charged in a deadly shooting right outside the Dane County Jail last year are sentenced in court. What the victim's family members had to say. Also, a family searching for answers 16 years after a woman's murder. What investigators are still trying to figure out and how you can help. And it's nearly been a year since the Supreme Court's decision to overturn Roe v. Wade. We take a look at some of the local impacts of that decision. You're watching News 3 Now at 6. I hated to see you in that car or uh, to know you was uh, anybody that Dwayne knew was in that car. It was an emotional day in court for the family of Dwayne Lee Collins Jr. The man killed just minutes after being released from the Dane County Jail last year. This morning, the two men who admitted to shooting him were sentenced. Our Braden Ross was in that courtroom this morning when his family got the chance to speak to the men directly. Braden? Charlotte and Eric, the family says they don't know the man who pulled the trigger, but feel betrayed by the man who drove the getaway car, saying he was like a member of their family. Friday morning, life sentences handed out to the two men charged with the March 2022 shooting death of 32-year-old Dwayne Lee Collins Jr. This was a pre-planned execution of someone who they knew by nature of the building he was walking out of couldn't be armed and couldn't defend himself. 20-year-old Damone Cummins admitted to shooting Collins Jr. multiple times as he left the Dane County Jail on the afternoon of March 30th, 2022. He then got into a getaway car driven by 26-year-old Eamon Geltney. The two led police on a high-speed chase through Madison before eventually being arrested. Collins Jr.'s mom was waiting in a car to pick him up and saw the whole incident unfold in front of her. I'm not the same anymore, and I'll never be the same again. She was one of several family members who spoke in court Friday, first to Cummins, who they said they don't know and suspect was hired to kill their loved one. I feel bad for you because you were sent to do something at very stupid at a young age, and you wasted your life for something that didn't need to be done. But it was the driver, Eamon Galtney, who they say hurt them the most. My family gave you a safe place when you didn't have one, and you turned around and helped execute one of us. You stayed nights at our house. It wasn't nothing that you kids asked me for that I, if I had, I wouldn't give it to you. To know you was in that car, it, 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 it took some from me. The shooting is thought to have been just one in a series between rival gangs in Madison and Chicago. Violence Collins Jr.'s father says has to stop. If he have kids, I pray that he will have his kids to have some type of forgiveness in their heart to where they don't have the same re retaliation. No, because it has to stop. Both Cummins and Galtney will be eligible to apply for extended supervision when they turn 65 years old. Prosecutors say the investigation into others who may have been involved in the killing is still ongoing. A Sun Prairie man is sentenced to more than seven years in federal prison for his role in a child sex trafficking operation. 36-year-old Julio Valera Valera was one of seven people sentenced. All seven pleaded guilty to charges of a conspiracy to commit sex trafficking. Valera Valera was sentenced to 87 months in prison, followed by five years of supervised release. Prosecutors alleged Valera Valera drove a 16-year-old girl between Dane County and Green Lake County multiple times for her to perform sex acts for dairy farm workers in 2019. Five additional men were prosecuted in Green Lake County in connection with the operation. And let's check the first one forecast now with Julian Seawright. A hazy and hot day for us in here in southern Wisconsin, but we are looking for a big turn just around the corner. It's just going to take about 24 hours until we get there. Take a look right now at what our radar is showing. Areas to the northern parts of Wisconsin are already starting to see, that's right, finally some rainfall on our radar. But we're going to stay dry for today, tonight, and throughout early parts of our Saturday. But Saturday afternoon and night, we are looking for that change. Now we have a marginal risk for seeing severe weather from parts of Dane County over towards the west and slight risk for parts of Grant, Lafayette, and even for Vernon counties. Now we're gonna be watching that system start to develop as we get into our late Saturday afternoon, evening hours, Saturday nights, and that's right, throughout all of our Sunday, we're gonna be expecting widespread rain, potentially a couple of thunderstorms, but nevertheless, we are finally gonna get some much needed rainfall for us here in southern Wisconsin. Some areas could see some strong thunderstorms, but nevertheless, most of the thunderstorms we'll see tomorrow will be rather general and mainly going to be rain for the event. Nevertheless, we are also going to be seeing our air quality advisory.
increase in effect due to ozone and some hazy skies until 11 p.m. through our Saturday. The hazy skies themselves will start to phase out once we get into our Saturday afternoon and Saturday nights. Thanks to that system that's going to be moving its way in. So planning out the rest of tonight, just notes it's going to be warm until we get into the overnight hours. We'll start to cool down to more comfortable conditions into the lower 60s for us here in Madison, but 60 degrees for Janesville and about 64 degrees for Platteville. We'll talk more about how you can plan out your weekend in a few moments. Until then, over to you. It's been 16 years since Kelly Nolan went missing from State Street. Her body was found in the woods two weeks later. It's been a long and hard fight for justice, but her family tells our Arman Rahman they will never stop searching for her killer. Arman. Eric and Charlotte, we're at the apartment on Mifflin Street where Kelly lived the summer that she was in Madison. A painful spot, of course, for her sister to return to. Nolan was living here when she went out with friends to State Street that night in 2007. Eventually, she separated from the group but stayed in the area and was last seen early the next morning. Then her body was recovered in the woods in the town of Dunn 16 days later. Now, 16 years later, her family pleads not to let her name fade from people's minds. This could be your best friend. This could be your sister. This could be your daughter. And we miss her so much and wish she was here today. And I know anybody that would lose someone they love would also feel like that. Investigators are still trying to figure out whether Nolan left the downtown area on her own or if she was taken. And tonight at 10, we'll hear from Madison police detectives who tell me any bit of information people may recall from that time period, whether it be someone who lived in the area that was suspicious or a vehicle in an odd spot is helpful and people should contact Madison Area Crime Stoppers. Kelly Nolan's family is also still offering a $25,000 reward. For now, live in downtown Madison, Armand Rahman, News 3 Now. Armand, thank you. A Cudahy woman faces a criminal charge after investigators reported she stole donations intended for the Stars and Stripes honor flight. 60-year-old Joni Nogay is accused of stealing the money that provides life-changing trips and memories for our veterans. Milwaukee County investigators say between 2016 and this year, Nogay's nonprofit, We Run, They Fly, collected more than $100,000 in donations. The complaint shows multiple checks that never made it to the Stars and Stripes Honor Flight. Out of all the money raised, the group received less than $20,000. Investigators say a majority of that money went to Gay's personal expenses, including spa services, groceries, and more. It's preying on our veterans, those men and women that we're trying to honor as a community. And if it's true, it's just sickening. Law enforcement began investigating after issues surfaced with a check for more than $9,000 two years ago. Authorities say Nogay admitted to the wrongdoing, expressed remorse, and pledged to make it right. Authorities are asking the public to pay extra attention to their money after a counterfeit bill was allegedly used in Juneau County. The Juneau County Sheriff's Office posted on Facebook that they were notified about counterfeit money given to an area business. They say the bills clearly read movie prop use only. The business confiscated the money and contacted the Sheriff's Office. Law enforcement is currently trying to find the person who used those fake bills. The DNR will be increasing the number of wardens and law enforcement on state waterways over the 4th of July weekend. It's part of the department's national operation dry water campaign that heightened enforcement period is scheduled for july 1st through 3rd and during this time law enforcement officers will focus on educating boaters about safe boating practices and enforcing laws against operating a boat under the influence of alcohol or drugs now in wisconsin operating a boat with a blood alcohol content of 0.08 percent or higher is illegal Tomorrow will mark one year since the Supreme Court ruling ended federal protection for abortion access nationwide. In Wisconsin, that move to overturn Roe v. Wade meant reverting to a law from way back in 1849 that effectively made abortion illegal in the state. Tahlil Mahdeen joins us now to share how local groups have worked within that law to still provide resources in this past year. Tahlil? That's right. Since that decision, public health leaders in Dane County say the reproductive landscape has changed dramatically, but the need for service has not changed. Dane County, together with the city of Madison, invested more than a million dollars to expand services. They're providing more access to contraceptives and launching a nurse navigator program, which helps people review their options around abortion, adoption, and other resources. A lot of that has been kind of planning and building things from the ground up building programs from the ground up. So, um, you know, we're really excited to be in putting some of these programs and some of these plans into action. 
For Planned Parenthood Wisconsin, the decision means partnering with their chapter in Illinois, locally handling only intake and aftercare for procedures done across the border. Planned Parenthood Illinois says of all out of all of their state out of state patients, almost half are from Wisconsin. Coming up, the Village of Oregon playing host to some summer fun this weekend. Plus, the elephants at the Circus World Museum prepare for one last big top parade in Baraboo. Charlotte's going to be involved in that. We'll have more of that after this. Ride a chip. <clears throat> Just taking a break. That window's a bear. Don't worry. My cousin's got a guy. <laughs> Hey, I'm not sure I can help you with the house gas, but I can help you replace this window fast. Let the experts at Feldco kickstart your summer with two-for-one windows and no interest until 2025. Plus, we'll get it done with Feldco fast. Two-for-one windows won't last long. Hurry. Call now. Call 866 for feldco Attention, Wisconsin veterans. I'm Tony Evers, the governor of Wisconsin. If you are a veteran struggling to pay for rent, utilities, or other life-sustaining services, I want you to know that the Veterans Rental Assistance Program is here to help. The Veterans Rental Assistance Program was created by and for people living in Wisconsin with benefit approvals being issued to veterans in just days, not months. You have already made a most noble sacrifice. You shouldn't have to continue doing so. We are here to support you. With pride in a way, it's never easy to ask for assistance, but rest assured, we are here to help. The VRAP team is standing by to help. So call 833-WISVRAP or visit VRAPWI.com. You've always been there for us. We want you to know that we're here for you. On behalf of the state of Wisconsin, thank you. You got me. Tag, you're it. Imagine a world with no drama. With 4imprint, you don't have to chase down the perfect promotional products. Exclusive apparel, bags, drinkware, and more. 4imprint will help you capture the moment and guarantee to deliver your order on time and on budget. Take the drama out of ordering promotional products at 4imprint.com. 4imprint for certain. You're watching News 3 Now at 6. If you're looking for some fun and games this weekend, Oregon is holding its annual summer fest from now through Sunday. Attendees can head to Kaiser Park for carnival rides, music, and other activities. Along with their large beer tent, there will be a new family tent that features family-friendly games for all ages. And there's also a softball tournament running all weekend long. The community does look forward to it, and they, they have high standards, and we are trying to meet those standards. Um, we do, too. Uh, it's it's just a great time for the community to get together. And later tonight, a fireworks show is set to take place around dusk or about 945. So they say get there early. It's a big weekend in Sauk County as the Big Top Parade returns to the streets of downtown Baraboo. It is bittersweet this time around, though, as this marks the final parade for the elephants at the Circus World Museum. Viola and Kelly are two animals that have certainly made names for themselves over the years. They'll be heading off into retirement down south after this weekend's parade. The elephants have been a staple in the Baraboo community for decades, and it's safe to say they will be missed. This year it's all about selling the heritage and the history of these magnificent animals. I mean, they have been part of the Baraboo community since 1888. That's 135 years that they've been part of the DNA here in Baraboo. News 3 Now is proud to be part of this year's Big Top Parade in Baraboo, and I will be one of the guest judges along with Allison Dairyland and Craig Culver. For more information on the day's events, just go to channel3000.com. Still ahead, the FDA releases draft guidance on clinical trials that use psychedelic drugs. Also with high temps today, and at least for part of the weekend, why those taking medication need to be careful. Plus, we may finally get some rain this weekend, and Julian will have the, the very latest is complete forecast when we come back. Get organized with 11% off everything in Menards. Keep your home neat and reduce clutter with help from Dakota. Whether you need extra storage or want to add an accent to your living space, we carry the shelving and closet systems for you. Get Dakota shelving in a variety of finishes to match your style or maximize your space with customizable Dakota closets. Get this white closet system for just $198.97 after 11% off at Menards. Save big money at Menards. 
this right here is confidence in a bottle. Not only does it change you on the outside, but something in the inside, knowing that you're looking better. It makes me feel so much more confident than I've ever felt in my life. They are some of the hottest videos on social media. Those videos claiming to instantly get rid of bags under your eyes. Well, today we're going to see one for ourselves and let you be the judge. It's called Plexiderm, and lifestyle expert Annette Figueroa is here to tell us why she says this one is for real. This one is for real, and I'm so excited. We even have a video, and you'll notice the model has bags underneath his eyes and some sagging, and all he uses is a small amount on a clean, dry face, and that's how easy it is. All right, what's the active ingredient? Okay, so it's silicates that are minerals found in shale rock, and what it does is it tightens and lifts the appearance of bags underneath your eyes in as little as 10 minutes, no prescriptions, and very little effort. Even watching the video, this is a real, uh, uh -huh. it's a model, but it's a real guy with real bags underneath his eyes. My real true opinion is holy words I can't say on camera. <laughs> this is absolutely unbelievable. I mean, I could feel it just lifting my skin. It was amazing. It feels good. It feels great. Looks even better. And I did this to my father. We were at home. So we applied it to his under eye bags. And let me tell you, we were so excited. In under 10 minutes, they visibly disappeared from view. And now it is literally part of both of our daily routines. He calls me every single month saying, hey, Annette, I'm out of Plexiderm, please send me more. And not only does it work on the bags, it works on the appearance of crow's feet, fine lines, and wrinkles. The way you wanna do it is you wanna have a clean, dry face, you use a small amount because it's so powerful. You have high school reunions, you have events you wanna go to, you wanna look years younger, this is it. This July 4th is the best time to try Plexiderm at our startup price of only $14.95. Your solution is at plexidermtrial.com or call the number on your screen. You're watching News 3 Now at 6. Welcome back. The FDA released new draft guidance today on clinical trials that use psychedelic drugs. The new guidance outlines how to collect data and conduct trials involving psychedelics. It also highlights potential risks for mood changes and hallucinations when experimenting with such drugs and discusses measures that can be taken to prevent drug misuse. As summer heats up, health experts say be aware some medications can cause heat intolerance and can lead to potentially serious complications. Manny Gaither has more on how to know if your medicine may make you more sensitive to the sun. The heat and some medications, they don't always mix. If someone's not careful and they're on some of these higher risk medications and happen to be in a heat wave with you know, prolonged exposure to higher temperatures, the, they can end up getting sicker. Dr. Mark Conroy with Ohio State University's Wexner Medical Center says people on certain medications are more likely to end up in the emergency room for heat-related illnesses compared to those who are not on medicine. Drugs that may put you at higher risk of having problems in the heat include medications for blood pressure and mental health, antihistamines, and decongestants. If there's reports of a heat wave coming up, I would reach out to your local pharmacist or your primary care doctor uh, and just talk to them about the medications you're on. Not everyone who takes higher risk medications will have a reaction, but Conroy says red flags to watch out for include signs of dehydration like dizziness, not urinating as frequently despite drinking water, and lightheadedness. You have to be prepared. Having an emergency plan, keeping an extra bottle of water nearby, you know, reevaluating the activities you have planned. For Health Minute, I'm Andy Gaither. Dr. Conroy says it's also important to pay attention to how medications are stored. Some medicines can degrade in the heat and not be as effective, he says, to keep them out of direct sunlight. Not put them in hot cars. Generally, keeping them in a cool, dry place is best for most medications. Meanwhile, we could see the temperatures up into the 90s, but maybe some rain will ease things by the end of the weekend, Julian. Yeah, that's right. That's at least the hope for us is to start to see those temperatures climb into the 90s once again for our Saturday. But once we get into Sunday, more cooler and more tolerable weather is on the way for us with behind some rain. So take a look at our weather headlines. This is what we're going to be expecting for us here in southern Wisconsin. 90s for Saturday, but we're going to see rain and thunderstorms starting
starting to develop once we get into our Saturday late afternoon evening hours and it's going to stick around throughout the rest of our weekend. But some of those storms could either be strong or even severe by the time we get into the overnight hours from Saturday night into our early Sunday morning. But what we're going to be watching for real quick for our forecast, we do have an air quality advisory in effect until 11 p.m. for our Saturday. That's for all of Wisconsin. We're still going to be dealing with some hazy skies throughout the rest of our Friday. Start to phase out just a bit for our Saturday and then really clearing up once we start to see some of that rain developing as we get into our Saturday late afternoon. So as of right now, we're not looking at the activity, but the areas to the north starting to fire off a couple of showers and even some thunderstorms just near Minneapolis and parts of northern Wisconsin. Not very collective, but for us, we're staying on the dry side and getting into tomorrow. That's where we're going to start to see that big change. Marginal risk for areas west of Dane County and slight risk just at the very southwest corridor of us here in southern Wisconsin from Prairie du Chien towards Platteville and over towards Dubuque. We are looking for high winds with being one of the higher threats for us for any storms that could be either strong or even severe for tomorrow. And on top of it, some heavy rainfall, but it's mainly going to be the southwest where we're going to be looking for any of those issues to really start to fire up for us. So looking at this weekend, and again, Saturday is going to start off not only hot, but rather quiet. So you can do what you need to do throughout much of our Saturday afternoon. But getting into around the 5 o'clock and overnight hours, that's when we're going to be watching for that system to start to reel its way in for some showers and even some thunderstorms that, again, could be strong or even severe for areas to the south and west. Getting into our Sunday morning, we're expecting rain all day long. There might be a period where it could break off, but for the most part, we're going to be seeing widespread rain throughout our Sunday afternoon. Getting into our Sunday night, still going to be looking at some shower activity that will lead into our Monday afternoon and that's not going to be clearing up until we get into our Monday nights. But the thing is, though, if you're over towards the southwest, Monday afternoon, some of that shower activity will start to clear its way up. But for the rest of us from Dane County to the east, Monday night is when we're expecting to see that rain really to move its way out. Half an inch to three quarters is what we're going to be watching for. Some areas could see less. Some areas could see about an inch or potentially even more, especially if we get some of those thunderstorms that brings in that heavy rainfall to just linger a little bit for some areas. So it's one thing to be mindful of and to be watching very closely with the first one weather team as we continue to track these storms heading into this weekend. Going into next week, we're going to be cooling down mid 70s for Monday, lower 80s for two for Tuesday, excuse me, and that's going to be the theme for us. We're going to be seeing temperatures to be a bit more seasonable for next week and also watching for another round of some showers or thunderstorms by the back end of Thursday and Friday of next week. Well, now's the time to vote for the best of Madison 2023. You have until the end of the month to vote for your favorite businesses, people, things to do, and so much more. Just head to channel3000.com, look for this story on our homepage, then scroll down to the bottom of the article and you can click on each category to vote. All you need is a valid email address to register and make sure your votes are counted. And also don't forget, you can only vote once per category. And coming up in sports, Jerry Kelly's back on the links ahead of the U.S. Senior Open Championship. What it means to him that the tournament is in his home state. That's next on News 3 Now. News 3 Now First Worn Weather is brought to you by Lazy Boy Home Furnishings and Decor. Discover a shopping and design experience as comfortable as the furniture. Lazy Boy Home Furnishings and Decor. Schedule your free design consultation today. Don't wait until the weekend to enjoy a thick char broil steak made to your liking. Make a weeknight steak night at High Point Steakhouse, Southern Wisconsin's premier supper club. Well worth the short drive to Ridgeway. No matter what type of severe asthma you have, Tispire can help you have fewer asthma attacks and breathe better. Tispire is an add-on treatment for people 12 and over. It is not a rescue medication. Don't take Tespire if you're allergic to it. Allergic reactions may occur and can be serious. Rash or eye allergy can happen. Don't stop your asthma treatments unless your doctor tells you to. Tell your doctor if you have a parasitic infection or your asthma worsens. Sore throat, joint, and back pain may occur. Avoid live vaccines. No matter who you are, ask your asthma specialist about Tespire today. Stanley Steamer loves Madison, Wisconsin. I'm Paul Ashick, local owner of Stanley Steamer here in Madison. We've been proudly cleaning your homes and businesses for over 30 years and will continue to keep your carpet, upholstery, area rugs, hard floors, and air ducts clean for many more. We strive to provide the best quality in both the services we provide and the equipment we use. That's why you've trusted us to keep Madison and southwestern Wisconsin homes cleaner, healthier, and more beautiful place to live. Call and book a cleaning today. Stanley Steamer gets your home cleaner. 
Pet Machinery Row Bicycles, you'll find bicycle store quality electric e-bikes from Trek, Electra, Felt, Giant, and more. Trek offers the best-selling e-bike in America, Trek Verve Plus, under $2,500. At Machinery Row Bicycles, you'll find fat e-bikes, mountain e-bikes, road e-bikes, bike path e-bikes, and more. Free services included. The place to shop for your new e-bike is Machinery Row Bicycles, the most beautiful bicycle store in the world. Imagine a world with no drama, where the guarantee of high-quality promotional items delivered on time go to 4imprint.com. 4imprint, for certain. News 3 Now's call for action team gets results. We're taking action for you. Nearly 700 cases closed, more than a half million dollars recovered, and we're not finished yet. When you need help, call for action only on News 3 Now. Last night was Adrian Griffin's first NBA draft as the head coach of the Bucks, and the new man calling the shots in Milwaukee was making moves in the second round. The Bucks traded a future second round pick in cash to the Magic to move up and draft Andre Johns Jackson Jr. Now, last season with UConn, he led the Huskies to a national championship where he's scoring just under seven points and grabbing six rebounds per game. 22 picks later, the Bucks closed the draft by selecting Chris Livingston, 58th overall. In his lone season at Kentucky, the 6'6", 220-pound forward started 26 games where he averaged six points and four rebounds. Livingston was named to the All-SEC freshman team. Keanu Benton was drafted by Pittsburgh, then went through rookie minicamp, OTAs, and mandatory minicamp but didn't officially become a Steeler until today. The former Badger put pen to paper and signed his rookie contract. It's a four-year deal worth $7.3 million, but the best part for Benton, the first three years are guaranteed. Marcus Allen has announced he's leaving Wisconsin again. The sophomore wideout put his name in the transfer portal after an eventful eight months. Remember back in October, he left the Badgers, then in November, he committed to Minnesota, but then a couple weeks later, he pulled his name from the portal only to return to UW in December. Allen caught seven passes for 91 yards and a touchdown last season. After a disappointing finish in this year's AmFam Championship, Jerry Kelly took a couple weeks off to get his game back so he'd be ready for next week's U.S. Senior Open Championship. And the Madison native is no stranger to the course. Kelly played Century World back when he was in juniors, and even though the course itself is a little different from back in the day, he's excited that this major is in his home state. I mean, it doesn't get much better for us state guys to, uh, to play in Wisconsin. Uh, Century World, we've got so much history here. To have it in our home state, playing to the home crowd. Uh, I, I like to play it just a little bit, but, uh, you know, I, I really want to perform. That's number one. When it's, there, when it's in your home state, there's a lot more pressure to win. Yeah, a lot of crowds will be following him around. Zach, thank you. Let's go to Julian, final check of mm. the forecast. Things are going to be a little hot. I had to jump the gun for a second. Mm. We're going to be seeing some heat throughout our Saturday afternoon, but, folks, we're going to be cooling right back down as we head into our Sunday. It's going to be a rainy one, so make sure you have your rain gear standing by. And thanks for joining us for News 3 Now at 6. Have a great evening, and we'll see you back here at 10.